Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. Yeah, that was Josh Cook on the piano there. Let You're me welcome. just uh, raise it up a little bit. Wait, so what song was that, Josh? Uh, that was an original composition that I came up with uh, a couple days ago. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. I feel like I'm getting better at the whole, like, you know, like maybe storytelling of piano, you know? Just, like, some more sweeping stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's time to silence my phones and get this morning show started. Hey, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm here to talk about all the things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula, which kicks off with a little bit of weather. I have Nikki Robb here uh, from Missoula Gives, and she's here to talk about the Missoula Gives. It's happening uh, starting tomorrow, and it's going to be happening for about 72, 76 hours, and it's your chance to give to local nonprofits here in the city of Missoula. So let's kick things off with weather. Um, 30 degrees outside, your high is going to be 54, your low is going to be 33. Um, your high for Thursday is going to be 55. Things are going to get a lot warmer by Friday and Saturday. It's going to be mostly sunny with highs into the 60 degree temperature. So if you plan guys are planning on going out for a hike, being out and about and still be able to wear that sweater for some sweater weather, it's the perfect time for all you folks who like wearing sweaters year round. Dope. Are you excited for that? Uh, for some I nice weather? I just have this jacket and that's about it. Yeah, I mean that's uh, basically all you need. And a Christmas sweater. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for it to warm up. It did like snow yesterday, so. Yeah. But of course, you know, as the end of any uh, flu and cold season, there's always a lot of holdouts. And one of the holdouts is uh, pertussis, otherwise known as the whooping cough. One thing to not whoop, whoop it up is the whooping cough, because there have been 22 recorded cases in the Missoula County area of whooping cough. Last week, there were three uh, high school students or high school um, uh, at three uh, cases at Seno High School, uh, Pertussis is very contagious, and they ask people who have ta been in contact with students and staff at the Seno look for the signs, which include runny nose, nasal congestion, red, watery eyes, fever, cough. Um, it look, may look like a cold, but after a week or two, uh, you know, it's provoked vomiting, um, results in um, red or blue faces, causes of, of extreme fatigue, and a high-pitched whoop sound during every breath you take and extreme coughing. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's yeah. like, you know when you like wheeze, and this is the right kind of wheeze, it sounds like a whoop. Yeah. One yeah. of my friends from Sentinel had, had it. He like just got over it. Yeah. About a week ago. Yeah. I mean, you're supposed to go see the doctor so they can give you the medication to help you with this, of course. In Missoula County, uh, Missoula City County Health Department says in a new release that it has identified more than 300 close contacts with who may have been exposed to the highly contagious disease. Of course, all these cases are currently pending. Um, so tomorrow, May 2nd, the Missoula Historic Preservation Commission will celebrate five, year, five businesses that opened the doors more than 100 years ago. Karis Nursery and Landscape, Missoula Textile Services, the Union Club Bar and Grill, um, Bob Wards and Sons, Outdoor and Missoula's Office City will be honored as 100-year-old um, businesses in around town. And they're going to be hosting this at Karis Nursery. Um, starting tomorrow at 5.30, and it's off their street pie uh, past Wheat, Montana. You can't miss it. So what do you think? 100-year businesses. Um, I mean, that's impressive. Yeah. Uh, I don't you know, know how long my job has been around for, but definitely not 100 years. I no, I, Cafe Dolce is, it, it hasn't like been around too long. Years. I remember when I was in high school and they kind of opened up in the mall, yeah. and then they built that new facility, which is about 10-plus years old now. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, uh, you know, I'll probably be around to see the the hundred year anniversary of that too. But like, yeah, those businesses have been very influential in the community. Yeah. Very I mean, Bob Wards and Son is a prime example of something that hasn't necessarily been in that location forever. They've kind of been all around, you know, Missoula. Maybe I think at one point they were in this inside the Missoula Mercantile selling their uh, wards and wares and yeah. sons. Um, and their sons. <laughs> their sons. Yeah. <laughs> all their other wards. Oh, excuse me there for a second. Uh, I'm uh, I was sick on Tuesday and I'm still kind of sick, but and it wasn't pertussis. I'm pretty sure it's not. I don't feel terrible. It just feels okay. like a, a natural cold. Anyways, um, in state 
Uh, in state um, news, uh, the Montana Supreme Court in a 4-3 ru ruling says that nurses in Montana could provide early term abortions while a lawsuit plays out in court. 93% of counties in Montana do not have abortion providers. Those uh, counties are home to 55% of all s of states of Montana's women. Advanced practice nurses provide the care for people experiences miscarriages, which can be nearly identical to abortion care. In 2018, lawsuit reads, uh, that can include management by a medication or surgical procedure. Essentially, the same procedure is as an early abortion. According to the lawsuit, these types of nurses can also deliver babies, which the lawsuit notes carries a greater risk to the patient. Montana's Republican-dominated legislature, which adjourned last week, passed three abortion laws aimed to restricting or limiting access to medical procedures, which included nurses performing these procedures. That included the Montana Pain uh, Capable Unborn Child Protection Act, which would, um, uh, would outlaw abortion after 20 weeks. All three are expected to be vetoed by Governor Steve Bullock, a Democrat who has vetoed similar bills in the past. International news, big thing happened in Venezuela. Uh, Juan uh, uh, Guardo, um, Venezuela's most powerful opposition leader, has declared a state of the final phase of an effort to oust President Nicolas Maduro, urging supporters into uh, the streets Tuesday and telling them the moment is now. Early Tuesday morning, um, he uh, released a three-minute video from the uh, uh, Caracas, airbase and described the Venezuelan people's fight flanked by a man with helmets and weapons. He discussed ending the usurpation, a term that he has often used to describe Maduro's hold on the once oil-rich nation. NPR reports that journalists on the ground report echoes of gunfire and tear gas on the streets. Since 2013, Nicolas Maduro has served as president and since then has refused to step down from office. And on Tuesday, he issued a stream of tweets, including one that invoked nerves of steel and insisted that forces remain loyal to him. Under their socialist government, Venezuelans have suffered from shortage of food, medicine, and electricity as inflation has soared. So those are some of your news items that are happening. On Monday, um, <coughs> that was kind of like the day I probably shouldn't have been out and about, but I, which made me got sick, but we got some beautiful drone shots of the outdoor art in Lincoln, Montana, if you guys get a chance to. Um, I completely spaced the name right now, but I quickly edited a nice short video for you guys to check out. So without further ado, here is uh, this, and then when we come back, we're going to have Nikki Rob on. guys, welcome back. We're here with Nikki Rob, the program manager with Missoula Gives. And you guys are also with the uh, Missoula, uh, what's that called? The Community? Foundation. Foundation. Yes. yes. <laughs> MCF for short, um, if you like acronyms. And nonprofits are not short of acronyms and not short of money because they're always looking for uh, money. And Missoula Gives is one of the big staples of the Missoula Community Foundation. So tell us a little bit more about Missoula Gives. So Missoula Gives is a 27 hour online and in person giving event. So uh, this is our, our sixth year doing this. So what we do is we work to get as many nonprofits from both Missoula County and Ravalli County signed up. This year we've got about 165 nonprofits. So that's pretty exciting. And they'll all be on the same 27 hours working together to raise funds for their organization, whether it's a cause or a program or operating funds, whatever that might be. And so uh, Ravalli County, um, you guys, uh, 
um, they were kind of in it last year, but this year they're all in. Yes, yes. So we asked uh, the Ravalli County folks to join us. Uh, the way we see it, they are our neighbors, and we should all be working together. You know, this is um, we're a, we're a large state, but with not a lot of people. So the more we can work together, the more impactful we'll be for our communities. So we considered them our neighbors and said, "Come on in and join us." And this year they're doing great. We've got events happening in Hamilton. We have events happening in Stevensville. So there's a lot going on this week. Nice. So. Um, how many uh, nonprofits are um, involved with Missoula Gibbs this year? So this year we have 165, and our goal is for 3,000 local Montanans to get together and raise a half a million dollars for our participating nonprofits. So I feel like we can do it. Last year we raised $420,000, so from about 2,800 donors. So I think this year we can hit that half a million mark. Okay. So, uh, oh, wrong button. All right. <laughs> So the website, if you go to MissoulaGives.org, it is a wonderful resource for donating to your favorite nonprofit here in the city of Missoula. There are many nonprofits, uh, one of which is MCT. You know, MCT is a big staple, but it, most people don't even know it's a nonprofit here in town. But it's one of many nonprofits that have been working really hard with your organization and trying to get the word out, try to raise some money, and yeah. it's just a good opportunity for them to kind of have a catalyst to help them get money. Yeah, the way we, our role as the community foundation is this, is we supply this platform. And we think this platform is really great because it helps several ways. One, it's a more cost-effective way for nonprofits to raise money instead of having like a large gala event. Two, um, it really educates people about how to do online fundraising. And we think that online fundraising is gonna be the wave of the future. So this has been a really educational tool. There's a lot of resources on the website for the nonprofits so that they can run a successful campaign. We also feel that this is a great way to um, educate board members, staff, other people about how to fundraise. So it's really a capacity building tool for all of these nonprofits. So nice. Yeah. So it, it, the, what is your kickoff event? So we got a lot of events coming up and the actual giving day kicks off tomorrow, Thursday, May 2nd at 5 p.m. at Plonk. We have a great kickoff party there. Anyone with at least a minimum donation of $10 can come down and get a free GFC cocktail. So big thanks to Plonk for that. Uh, that's a great event, so if you're out and about, it's going to be beautiful. I'll stop by Plonk sometime between 5 and 8 tomorrow, get yourself a free cocktail, make a donation, and join in the fun. Cool. And then Friday, we have a ton of events. Nice. So Friday is the, the main giving day. Uh, we'll kick off the morning at the Art Park, and we're going to have coffee and donuts for donors. So if you've made a donation, come on down and get yourself a free Krispy Kreme donut and a cup of coffee. Uh, so we'll be there from 9 to noon. Um, we will also be on campus both Thursday and Friday from 11 to 2. Uh, we'll be out there with Big Polly the Pollinator, our mascot. She'll be taking photos and, and educating people in our community about donating. And then Friday, we're also going to be at the Good Food Store from 11 to 2. So come on down there and make a donation. <clears throat> Anyone that makes a donation there gets entered into a good raffle package that the folks at the Good Food Store have put together for us. And then we'll be at the Old Post, another place that a lot of people don't know is a nonprofit. They're actually an American Legion oh. post, so they raise money to help local veterans. So they're a great, great group, and they've, uh, they've partnered with us to kind of be our headquarters for the day. So we'll be there all day um, outside just kind of, you know, spreading the word. And then during First Friday, they've got a parking lot party. So nice. we'll be celebrating with them. There's going to be, you know, 30 plus nonprofits downtown tabling. So it's going to be a great educational piece. Come on down to First Friday and learn about some of our great um, nonprofits in town and help help these guys by making a donation at MissoulaGives.org. Yep. Speaking of MissoulaGives.org, this is a website where you can find all this information that you just heard today, where the events are being held, who you can donate to, how you can donate to people as well. Yep. But also, uh, I remember the last couple of years you guys had a couple uh, stops where people can donate at places. So yep. uh, there's a couple hubs. Mm -hmm. Do you want to uh, mention any of the couple hubs that people could go to to donate? Yeah, so the hubs, the in-person places to donate again are Thursday at the uh, Plonk from 5 to 8. Uh, we'll be taking donations on campus. And then the art park from 9 to noon on Friday, the good food store from 11.30 to 2 on Friday, and then all day at the Old Post we'll be taking donations. And then during First Friday, with all these nonprofits down there, if you meet a nonprofit that you like what they're doing and they've, you know, they've been really inf informational, you can go on to your, just log on to your phone, MissoulaGives.org, click that yellow donate button right in the center or up in the top. You can search them and find the organization you're looking for. But I'm sure that there's a lot of a lot of different nonprofits in there that have affected your life in one way or another. So minimum donation of five dollars to donate. So you can donate to ten different organizations at five dollars a pop if you wanted to. Nice. Yeah. So 
get out there, check out that website. There's a ton of great nonprofits on there. You can see the list of all the participants. You can search by cause. So if, you, you know, if you're really into youth organizations or you're really into animals or environment, you can search that and see all the groups that are related to that. Maybe you are looking for a specific nonprofit like MCT or the Old Post or Animals, and you can just search them. They'll pop right up. So it's nice. really easy to make a donation. Everyone gets their own page. You can find out a little bit about what they're raising funds for and what it is they do for our community. So. Awesome. Well, you guys are doing a really good job. And let's hope that they raise half a million dollars. I think they can do it. We can do it. Yeah. Log on to MissoulaGives.org and help us raise a half a million for our communities. All right. Thanks, Nikki. Thanks, Scott. All right. We'll be right back right after this. guys welcome back let me tell you about uh <laughs> mcat stuff uh so mcat hey mcat's all about the public and always about providing any anybody and anyone uh, a way to get their voices heard and mcat is not short of orientations and uh public outreach type events and all sorts of things and you guys can check us out at mcat.org um if you're interested in having a group come by here youth groups work really well with mcat and mcat tours we're uh, uh totally facilitated with stop animation movie making abilities and also some amazing studio space for anybody who wants to use it as well. Um, if you're interested, you can log on to mcat.org to learn more information about MCAT while also signing up for any of our many things that are happening, which includes our Saturday drop-ins. Saturday drop-ins are every single Saturday. Our last Saturday drop-in is going to be May 18th, so the last chance that your kids will get to do a stop animation for this season is May 18th. We'll have a... Um, an animation camp happening in the summer, so you guys can check all that out by going on to MCAT.org. But if you're more interested in, in um, my show and learning about Wake Up Missoula, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. All you gotta do is use the Google to find Wake Up Missoula, and you can find me, Josh, and all sorts of wonderful people. Um, at the Google, and also not so wonderful people at Google, because Google is uh, unbiased when finding people. It's a catch-all. It's pretty much a catch-all. So, Josh, you know, I don't really have city council because uh, city council, it's the fifth, uh, it's the fifth uh, Monday of the week. And every uh, fifth Monday of the week and holidays, uh, city council does, just does not happen, which I'm really glad that I had uh, Nikki Rob here from Missoula Gives. It really helps make the show a little bit longer. So, mm -hmm. It's a good message, too. Yeah, it's a good message. Yeah. There's... You know, there's not really not too much to talk about. The last thing I have here uh, is pretty much events. But I, I, I want to do, uh, maybe, do you want to play some music, have a throw to you? Sure. Right yeah. now? Yeah, man. And then I could uh, show uh, dub and stuff, which I've brought back. So we'll have this, Thanks. and then we'll have dub and stuff. So All right. hit it, Josh.
America. The beautiful pearl that is inside the disgusting oyster that is planet Earth. Witness, small town America. The best place to skip rocks two times and wander around. Oh look, there's a hole. Let's check it out. Things happen, I swear. You are only limited by your imagination. And in this video, you'll learn all about Small Town America and its many, many recreational colleges. Hi! <laughs> I bet you didn't expect me to start talking as soon as the narration just started wrapping up. <sighs> Here we go. Please do not change the channel, for I have a bow tie, and it should not scare you. For in this video, you will learn... Alright, that's enough of that guy. Let's talk about me. Hello, my name is John Johnson Sen the Third, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that you will learn. But first of all, let me tell you about my books. See, books are for learning, and when you read a book, you learn from a book. Here, let's take a look at this school. See, in this education facility, you can learn all sorts of things, like gender-specific robes, white for girls, burgundy for boys. Universities are best for education, not so much social skills, because you might end up joining the wrong fraternity. Well, hi, hi there, guys. Let me tell you about all sorts of educational kind of things. It kind of all started back in the day. Um, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I wasn't really prepared for this, so, um, can we just cut to something else? Well, besides education, there's also football, basketball, plenty of track for running, baseball, <laughs> don't forget about those jumping jacks, <laughs> I'll see you later for dinner, honey. Hi there, I'm Coach Thompson, I'm also the math teacher and ballet instructor, but more on that a little bit later. The importance of jumping jacks are very important. In Roman times, they'd get the blood flowing so they can get Caesar to take over the thing, because either you live long enough to become the villain or die trying. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten and eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, 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 eighteen. <laughs> Did you guys like see the latest comic book movie that just came out? Um, why isn't anyone answering me? It was pretty good, but I like the other ones. Because they're exactly the same as this one, but it wasn't quite the same because it had different characters. Why watch the same thing over and over again? Those movies are like pizza. Most people just don't care either way. Well, maybe they should make a movie that connects with everybody, rather than just the fans. Just so you know, that video had nothing to do with John Glenn. Alright, anyways, uh, let's talk about uh, some events that are happening in the city of Missoula, and then we can start wrapping up this show. Uh, kicking off is YMCA, Roots Acker Sports Center, M Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics, and the Flying Squirrel, all for the indoor fun. As the weather starts getting warmer, these places become less and less popular, um, but this is your chance to have some indoor fun in many of these uh, places as well. Tiny Tales at Empower Place. This happens from about 10.30 to about 11 at the Missoula Food Bank. It's a wonderful opportunity for kids to pick up reading and maybe read a cookbook. I don't know. It's uh, the... Um, um, What's it called? Uh, Missoula Food Bank is the best place for uh, cooking classes, and they have a wonderful space. You should totally check it out. Hands-on science, botany. Um, Spectrum Discovery is learning about botany. Let's dive in the world of plants. And they're also build building boats at, in the afternoon, starting at 3 p.m. Scrabble and Bridge at Missoula Senior Center. Uh, you got middle school writers at Missoula Public Library, starting at 3.30 in the afternoon. There's a bunch of events happening as well. Um, Long-term side effects of breast cancer treatment, community cancer care and prevention. The side effect of breast cancer treatment may, may last many years after your treatment is over. Some common concerns include heart problems, pain, fatigue, numbness, and weight gain. During this session, you will learn what to watch for, what to report to your provider, and when to call them. This free session is for young women diagnosed with breast cancer before the age of 45 and is presented in partnership by Community Cancer Care and Prevention and Living Beyond Breast Cancer, a national breast cancer nonprofit organization. For questions about this event, you can call them at 406-327-3911. Again, that number is 327-3911. Managing emotional... 
I should manage my words. But anyways, managing emotions during the transition into middle school. Uh, how do you respond to your child as having a hard time self-regulating? How do you prepare the transition to middle school during this time? Get some tips how to talk to your kids, will listen, and listen so your kids can talk, and learn how to teach your kids emotional skills that will last a lifetime. And this is through the Lifelong Learning Center. Socrates Cafe, it is an open discussion forum for people who are into the whole philosophy thing, and it's at the Missoula Public Library in the uh, board meeting room from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, no previous philo philosophical training required, just bring your nagging doubts and idle thoughts, meet in the boardroom. 3D Printing Workshop 101, hey, you want to know how to 3D print? Well, Missoula Public Library has a 3D printer and they want to teach you. Uh, Tonight at 6.30 p.m. Um, in, in, in Missoula Public Library's 3D printers during this workshop, topics covered include how to set up prints, where to find 3D printed objects online to print, and resources available for 3D modeling and 3D scanning. Space is limited to six participants per workshop, and you can register online at missoulapubliclibrary.org. And this is from 6.30 to 7.30. It's an hour. It's not too bad. Uh, a big event that's happening this week is, hey, you like jazz, don't you? I'm talking to you, Josh. You like jazz. I do. Yeah, remember B-Movie? You like jazz? I do. Well... Anyways, sorry, that last um, cough was uh, made up. Okay, but the first let couple that, were real. Let that sickness leave yeah. you, man. <laughs> and, and get, uh, here, uh, just give it to people in the airways. You watch TV, you can get sick now. It's like, it's, yeah. it's 60. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Jazzula Jazz Festival at St. Anthony Parish Hall. Kicking off this year's 2019 Missoula Community Jazz Festival. Five nights. Uh, it kicked off last night, but it's going to be going on until Saturday, May 4th. The doors open at 6 p.m. nightly. It's uh, about... $15 per night, but if you get $35, you get the whole entire Jazzula um, deal. And this is at St. Anthony Parish Community Hall. Bar and food available. Concert and table seating. Five bands each night. They have about 35-minute sets. It's, it's quite the uh, jazz experience, and it's uh, going to be happening tonight and every single night until uh, Saturday night. What happens tonight is a bunch of karaoke. You like karaoke? Why not? Badlanders have karaoke, you got the Dark Horse has karaoke, blah, 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 karaoke. They got trivia at the still room, they got trivia at the silver slipper, they got trivia at the press box, all sorts of trivia. But then they have the men's a cappella four-part harmony uh, singing. It's going to be at the River Valley Church, and it's all about the singing. So let's learn a little bit more about the singing as the page loads. Weekly rehearsal at the Rocky Mountaineers, um, men's barbershop course, males of any age who can hear a sound and match a pitch are invited to come to rehearsals. Reading music is helpful but not required. They sing everything from old style barbershop to 50s, uh, crooners to Beatles and Beach Boys. And you can call Tom, I believe it's Tom Benson, um, 406-253-2811. Again, that number is 406-253-2811. And it's just a good opportunity for people to just like hang out and sing and stuff. I don't know. It's up to you. Who doesn't like to sing? Do you like to sing? I do. Yeah. It's pretty fun. We'll do some karaoke one night. And um, I want to sing Tequila because it's only, it's the easiest song. And yeah. I'll still get it wrong. It's the uh, Crash Symbol Paradox where, you know, you have that one Nope, but you get it wrong every single time. Crash Simple Paradox. You know, there's no such thing as a big part, but a lot of times it doesn't mean it's less important, even though Crash Simple always gets it wrong. Yeah. So that's why I, what I call the Crash Simple Paradox. I'm down for some tequila. Right? Tequila. Tequila's honestly the worst thing you can ever drink. If you want something that gives you a headache just by smelling it, that's tequila. Okay, moving on. Um, we got some art clips. This is a brand new art clip, which will be ending this week. Um, so we'll be able to show it today and the next and Friday. Um, but when I come back, I'm going to talk about your Thursday events. There's quite a bit of stuff happening Thursday. So let's so stay tuned.
Okay. Well, time to steal some jokes. Um, it's time for the rest of the uh, Missoula events. And b because I'm stealing all the events that are from MissoulaEvents.net. Let's kick things off with some Thursday stuff. Tiny tells us back at Missoula Public Library, learn to read. It is a great opportunity for kids who are uh, just before going to school because school, uh, they have a lot more success if they already know how to read going into school. Right? Makes yeah. sense. You know, it's one less thing they got to worry about and then they can concentrate on their social skills. Anyways, uh, computer fundamentals at Missoula Public Library starting at noon tomorrow as well. Hey, you want to know the computer part of the computers that are hardware? Mm, how to turn it on and off? Ooh, managing your desktop and how to open programs. I think Neil should take this just to manage his desktop. No experience yeah. is necessary. <laughs> Registration is required by calling 721-BOOK, otherwise known as 721 Two six six five, and this is just a one-hour class. But sometimes that's not enough. So think about it. Uh, Yap Thursday, they're talking about clay. Zootown Arts Community Center is doing hooray for clay. Students in this after-school camp can expect to get their hands dirty as they work with clay to gain basic understanding of the medium of 3D fundamentals. Students will gain knowledge and inspiration by viewing ceramics produced by local and world-renowned artists and explore personal and contemporary art themes to create clays, claywares, and sculptures. So it's Thursday, happening pretty much every Thursday, kicking off tomorrow until about June 6th. It's $95 um, or $85 if you're a member of the ZAC. And the ZAC is going to be getting a new facility soon, so look out for that. There's a lot of, thi there's a lot of new things happening in Missoula, like MCAT's going to get a new facility... That'll be nice. Um, Spectrum's going to get that new facility as well, and so is uh, Families First, because Families First um, Children's Museum hasn't been kind of had a, a, a facility for a while because of the whole um, cigar club in that area. So that's a whole other thing as well. And they're never I'm never going to let them leave it, let it down. It's, it's like, think of the children. Anyways, sketch a bug. Um, as well as sectarium naturalists often draw or paint the animals and plants they observe. These illustrations are enjoyed both as works of art and are used successful tools for helping others learn the physical features that identify each species. Drop in and try your hand at creating a biological illustration um, for, from some of the fascinating live specimens. Yeah, Missoula and Secretarium, it's a great play. Um, but also, Lego Club, if you're interested in a little things that are a little plastic guys and just playing with some Legos, um, Missoula Public Library has a lot of Legos to play with, and it happens every Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Um, Missoula Gives is, uh, is kicking off at 5 p.m. It's the Missoula Community Foundation's annual giving day and Missoula's largest community-wide fundraiser. The event benefits over 150 nonprofits in the greater Missoula area. Nikki Rabba is here. I want to thank her again for stopping by. Once again, Jazzula is also happening um, Thursday night at 6.30 p.m. Newsies at MCT. Hey, it's, uh, they have two more weeks of, of Newsies. I'm running spot for Newsies. It's going to be great. Um, Usually when I'm sitting up there in the cat box, my like crack shows, so I'm rearing to go. Yep. If you see a, a circular light on the stage, it might be Scott. Yep. If you, see me, if, if you see a spot that's wrong, it's probably it's not me. Really, yeah. <laughs> it's not Scott. Because I Anything am amazing at pointing things. At I'm amazing at pointing. I'm good at pointing. I'm pretty good at that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my one. All right. Homegrown Comedy Night, you were looking for this, yeah, 9.30, yeah. Homegrown Comedy Night, it's 9.30, uh, first Thursday of every month, um, you can um, enjoy some comedy, it's just an open mic comedy night, That it's open mic, but it's also geared towards comedy, yeah, yeah, what do you think, Josh, you like comedy, funnies, you know, you like being funny, don't you, a little bit, yeah, mm -hmm. I like, I like uh, the Joe Pesci, where it's like, you think I'm a clown? You think I look like a clown? And then he's like really offended. He's like, do I look like a clown? And it's like, you can't not laugh at that. Back in the day, it was like, it's like, okay, he's a tough guy. But nowadays, it's like, yeah. Because yeah. we're so used to watching it over and over again, it's, it becomes a very comedic scene, even though he is a very violent person. Yeah, maybe I should do something like that. I think mine is going to be kind of just like, uh, like if I show up, it'll just be like, tell us something at the Roxy. Yeah. Except... Uh, I mean, it really depends. I, like, you, you could be the co comedian that has a character. You can be, be a character. Sure. And then there's the Andy Kaufman, who's just like, he's more about entertaining himself than entertaining the crowd. Yeah. Um, and I mean, most of the stories I have to tell are, like, uh, pretty much jokes. So, like, yeah. I feel like I'm going in with... Yeah. 
because you know uh, Jim Carrey who played Andy Kaufman like most of uh, Andy Kaufman's real friends in the day were just like yeah Jim Carrey's Andy Kaufman was a jerk like yeah. the real Andy Kaufman was like the sweetest nicest person ever I don't know yeah yeah interesting yeah but it's interesting because there was that uh, that basically self fulfilling uh, um, documentary about Jim Carrey playing Andy Kaufman. It was like he really became Andy. It was like, eh, did he? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, uh, enough about comedy. Let's talk about some other late night events that are happening uh, for a Thursday night. If you're interested in going out, they got Party Volcano. You know what that is? It's it's oh. basically music that goes mch, mch, mch. a lot of people dancing, a lot of people sweating, people take pictures. So you you know. You're talking about a rave. Yeah, it's more like a club. You know, it's not like a, a club, uh, but it's more like a club. You know, like a club. Great. You know, you just club. Yeah. I used to do uh, Thursday Night Deals. They used to be called Dead Hipster, and everyone's like, Dead Hipster, and it was really popular. And then, It's like the most hipster-sounding name I've ever heard. It's pretty hipster. Yeah. Dead Hipster. Oh. But they still, uh, once in a while, they do a couple shows. It's I Love the 90s. They're all about the um, I Love the 90s kind of shows. They do those maybe like once a month on a Friday. Sounds pretty fun. Yeah, if you like '90s music, which you know most '90s music is, is pretty bad by anyone's standards. It's really not that great. It's more just like you know, like I'm sorry for the Nirvana fans, but that sounding music is just kind of depressing. And I'm sorry, I, I I really like poppy happy music, but not like poppy in terms of like if you were to put a scale of Nirvana to Ariana Grande, I'd probably go with just below Britney Spears, maybe um as Christina Aguilera. Yeah, I think the only 90s song that I listen to regularly is Skilos, I Wish. Um, I do like the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. Um, Smash Mouth. Honestly, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta give love to Smash Mouth, even though like, they've become an internet meme that everyone kind of hates. Oh, they hate it too, believe me. Yeah, but they, they, they also hate it. <laughs> hey, like, Hey Now You're an All Star is basically a music video about the movie Mystery Men. Yeah. Yeah, Mystery Men is such a good movie. Yeah, they have they have a weird uh, connection with just movies, which they probably like regret at this point. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, another good movie that features Smash Mouth is um, Rat Race. It was like one of the last like movies that kind of had a whole bunch of comedian cast, and they jumped around like six different stories of them basically running to get a million dollars. It's definitely worth a watch. It's one movie I definitely suggest watching if you want a good laugh. If you like Seth Green, Whoopi Goldberg. And uh, a bunch of other people. Uh, Rowan Atkinson, otherwise known as Mr. Bean. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, Monty Python guy. I can't remember his uh, name. Uh, John Cleese. Yeah, John Yep, Cleese. he's in that. Um, nice. There's a lot of big names in that movie. You know, like Seth Green was, at that time, was the, one of the younger funny guys. This is before Robot Chicken. Yeah. I like... Um, Rowan Atkinson's one of my favorite actors from, like, uh, did you ever watch Black Adder? No. It was a, a British show about, like, basically, I think it was, like, a guy in different armies, but he's, like, you know, the bumbling fool, you know? Rowan Atkinson plays those. Oh, yeah. And, you know, but Johnny English, uh, no, I, the first Johnny English movie was, like, amazing. And then yeah. I didn't see the other two. They were good. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he's also, like, just, he's good at physical comedy. And Blackadder was so well written, you know? But I think it, it I, I really think the, that a lot of British comedies have kind of lost a lot of um, um, kind of like traction in the American audience ever yeah. since like Edgar Wright because their comedies have kind of like changed the game kind of like where it's funny but it's not like you don't feel like it's forced it's like genuine like humor. Oh, uh, Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie were also on that show. You know, Fry and Laurie mm -hmm. they were like comedy masters at that time, um, and they're still just great actors. Yep. There's a, another movie that's from all that that's um, that's based in London. It was directed by David Schwimmer, the guy from Friends who played um, tall guy. A tall guy from Friends, David Schwimmer. Yeah, who did he play? Uh, no, he was a director of a movie that was based in London that had oh. Simon Pegg. It was called uh, Run, Fat Boy, Run. Hmm. And um, <laughs> it was basically Simon Pegg. You know, Simon Pegg got a big old beer belly, and he had to run in this movie. And Hank Azaria was in it, too. There's a, there was a good amount of cast, too. There was uh, Thaddy Newton. Thaddy Newton, who uh, you might know from Westworld, is also in this one as well. So uh, Run, Fat Body, Run is a really good movie as well. It's very heartwarming. It's not one of those like big like controversial films or any kind of deals like that, but it's just a, it, it's a movie that you can watch. Nice. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I haven't really seen too many, like, big British movies. Like, you know, James Bond has always been the staple, and they always sell here in America as well. But, you know, British comedies are kind of, like, iffy at this point. Yeah. A little bit. Did you get an <laughs> error on your computer? Yeah, it's weird. That's the first error I've seen. Anyways. Dang. Yeah. Oh, well. But I think that's pretty much it for our show. Um, I want to thank Nikki Robb, uh, program manager for uh, Missoula Gives and the Missoula um, Community <laughs> Foundation. They're doing a lot of uh, good work for nonprofits here in the city of Missoula, helping them raise money to uh, many different things. And, of course, you can always go to um, Missoula Gives. I got to go type. Oh, crap. Never mind. <laughs> I can't type with one hand and spell no, correctly. Missoula. Okay, anyways. MissoulaGives.org, Missoula and it kicks off tomorrow at Plonk, where they have a nice tip of the tip of the drink tip of tip tip over the drink. I don't know. I'm I'm like I'm just like trying to vamp here. So, Josh, please save me from myself and take it away. And for Wicked Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Uh, cool.